it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, September 16th. So we have the moon in Gemini all day, of course, building towards our last quarter moon in Gemini at 24 degrees, very late in the day on Saturday. So the moon in Gemini, very, very curious. We have lots to process in our mental plane, in our heart space. We are very divided, our heart and our head definitely on two very different pages right now. We are going to attempt to process the information, the details details of our perception or understanding of how things went down, where it is that we currently stand and where it is that we desire to go. By the time that we actually hit the last quarter moon in Gemini late Saturday afternoon, we will be leaning towards one path, one direction, one choice, one decision over the other and have a much better grounded middle ground understanding of some situations why they had to happen, what they are preparing us for in this present moment as we strategize and plan to make moves moving forward into the future. Now, keep in mind that the moon in Gemini brings a lot of air energy to our realm, and that tends to make us scatterbrained. It tends to make us really lack focus. It tends to have our restlessness, anxiety, anticipation all up in the air. Keep in mind, we are only about a week away from the equinox. That's why we feel very discontent, very discombobulated. As of right now, we are ending a cycle. And for many of us, we are in this very awkward adjustment period, this void like energy where things are swirling, nothing makes sense. We don't know if we're living in reality or a dream. And we sure as hell don't know where to go from here. All of that is absolutely normal. Absolutely to be expected. It's part of the process. Confusion leads to clarity and breakdowns lead to breakthroughs. So just be patient with yourself, with the process, act as the observer, see what comes up for you in your heart space and in your head space and pay attention to the topics and themes that are coming at you from the external realm. All very divinely scripted with cryptic keywords, cryptic I'm going to say pieces of the puzzle that if you pay attention and you're using your highest self, your intuition, you will see how everything is snapping together in a very uncomfortable way in order to create a greater, grander picture of what it is that we're moving towards. So. The moon in Gemini is going to sextile, which is a very positive energy with Jupiter. Jupiter is about growth, improvement, blessings, abundance, and beliefs. And yes, retrograde in Aries energy. When fire energy and air energy get together, if we're balanced enough in order to keep the ideas flowing, the mental process going, and not act on impulse to take action and make moves without plans and strategies we are able to actually have some profound insight on where it is that we've accomplished a lot, especially since April and May of this year, and where it is that we've had a lot of growth, a lot of improvements, but also a lot of situations that have really altered and changed not only our path moving forward, but the belief system that we have not only within ourselves, but with the greater grander universe. The moon is going to make an aspect, a positive one with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is also a beautiful aspect for us because air and water mix very well together as water is a conductor of electricity. And with our thoughts, our emotions rapidly moving through the processing stage, we can connect to the higher realms of intelligence to our intuition and actually bring some psychic abilities some psychic insight, if you will, into our mental plane. Neptune, of course, is connected to the higher realms of intelligence. This Gemini energy uh, ruled over by Mercury, who is retrograde, by the way, 
rules over the lower level intellect so that we're actually able to bring some of these aspects of our visions of our dreams into the logical intellect and actually formulate a plan on what it is that we're going to do with some of these creative ideas, these inspirations, these aha moments, and these visions that we have been actively trying to piece together. The moon is going to trine Mercury. Mercury rules over this Gemini energy. And because Mercury is in Libra energy, in air energy, and the moon is in Gemini, in air energy, this means that they're working together, they're blending their energies together in order to get on the same page. The moon is our heart space while Mercury is our head space. And we've had a lot to process. We've had a lot of topics and themes, especially in our past coming up for present renewal and integration acknowledgement before we go ahead and start piecing together the path, the plan that is going to lead us into our future. There are six planets currently retrograde, which means that there's a lot more reflection going on than anything else. This particular aspect of the moon and Mercury getting along means that we are striving to make a little bit of peace, a little bit of balance within our thoughts, within our emotions. We are gaining perspective and understanding of how we are supposed to get on the same page and meet ourselves in the middle in our inner realm so that we can kind of get an agreement and then prepare to make the physical changes take action when the universe gives us the green light go in our physical realms the moon in gemini is going to interact with pluto the great transformer who is retrograde in capricorn energy and the way that this is going down is likely going to bring up some not so nice thoughts some not so nice feels again we have to dabble in the shadow element the shadow realms of our thoughts and our emotions in order to process them from a different way we have more wisdom more knowledge now than ever before we have more understanding than we've ever had before and some Sometimes we need to take a good look at some of the past situations that we got in that likely were due because we did not stand our ground. We did not take accountability and responsibility for our own actions and our own lives and gave the power away to other people and likely did not turn out so well. This particular energy takes us down that dark path of memories, thoughts and feelings in order for us to recognize the mistakes that we made so that we will not make them again. Even more than that, we are doing a deep dive in the inner realm of our psyche of our heart space that Pluto really needs us to kind of create an inner transformation, a recalibration, a realignment with before we go ahead and actually start moving forward in a different direction in a different path in our physical realms we're in retrograde season this is an inner realm journey not an external realm journey we are, will not see any kind of productivity or progress be made until october when one by one these planets start start coming out of a retrograde and start going direct now this deep thought this deep memories these deep emotions that we have to move into is not to create more pain and trauma and suffering. It's to enlighten, shine a bright light, illuminate where some of those darker shadow elements are still alive within us in order for us to transmute, alchemize, transform them into something powerful, into something that we can use as motivation and inspiration to push ourselves forward. Is it fun? No. Is it necessary? Absolutely. So lean all the way into this particular process. So we have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty and worth and pleasure and money, who is currently in Virgo energy and Earth energy, really trying to help fix our problems, solve our issues, return us to a state of health and wellness and wholeness squaring getting into the boxing ring with mars the god of war ruling over our physical energy our drive our passion even our anger who is in gemini energy who is in his pre-shadow period we literally have the feminine divine energy the masculine divine energy entering into the boxing ring to reveal the shadow elements of both. So this is going to create a tension. This is going to create a conflict. This is going to highlight for us where it is that we are 
very unsatisfied with our current situation, especially where love and money matters and relationships are concerned. This is going to show us where it is that we are very discontent with some of the power exchanges going on and some of the relationships that we're pouring into. This particular, I'm going to say pressure, is intended to awaken us to new passions, new desires, new urges. Now, sometimes we have to sit in the funk of what it is that we do not like going on in our lives right now in order for us to come up with a better scenario that feels right, that feels more aligned with a mission, with a purpose, with our higher selves. And sometimes we have to be totally uncomfortable in our current circumstances and experiences for us to even realize that we want better. And sometimes we need to realize that we want better in order for us to realize what that situation and scenario would actually look like. That shows us where new passions, desires, and urges are actually being repressed within us where we are being distracted by current topics and themes, circumstances in our daily lives that have us pushing these urges and desires, these passions to the side, to the back burner, whether we know it or not. The problem is, is that right now we are focused on differences. We're focused on what is wrong. We're focused on what is broken because that's how the Virgo energy helps us out. We have to kind of zoom in on the smaller details of what isn't working in order to identify the problem, in order for us to tap into the Virgo energy that is the problem solver of the Zodiac in order to heal and fix it. But when we get caught up in the differences, when we are constantly just kind of focused on what isn't working and what doesn't feel good, sometimes that can be a very heavy weight and we can lose ourselves in that very toxic, not fun cycle of just being unhappy, discontent and unsatisfied with our current circumstances. What this is also going to bring up for us is trying to strive for balance between Letting things go and go with the flow versus pursuing things and being a little bit aggressive with going after what it is that we want. We have the feminine energy of Venus, who is very intuitive, very soft, more receptive than anything else, uh, would prefer to step back and let things flow to her instead of aggressively pursue things in life. And then you have Mars, who, again, is the aggressor, does know what has to be done in order to go after the passion, the goal, the vision, the dream, the desire. And the problem is, is that many of us don't have a direction nailed down right yet. We're a little bit confused. Uh, Mars being in Gemini, we're constantly, you know, debating the pros and cons and sitting on the fence with a lot of the choices, a lot of the paths and directions that we're trying to really commit to. And so we're going to have to find a balance between, you know, kind of going with the flow, but also being aggressive enough to take a step forward when we know that we want something. Now, we do have to be very careful because Mars likes to act on impulse without thinking uh, the long term consequences of action. So we definitely don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we are passionate that we are driven, that we are determined, that we are motivated, that we are inspired enough to aggressively go after what it is that we want, but to also not be acting a fool and exerting our energy in an unestablished path and direction that we haven't taken the time to think about thoroughly and think about the consequences and think about the steps, the calculated strategy that we have to take in order to actually make that happen. So it is going to be a little bit of a tug of war again with the energies. We all have feminine and masculine energies within us. It is very hard to strike a balance between the two, but we're definitely going to be illuminated where we are living in one extreme over the other. 
Now, to kind of make things a little bit more complicated, I would say, we have the sun in Virgo sitting across from and totally opposing Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces. Now, this is a similar type of energy that we would have experienced with the full moon in Pisces that we just had over this past weekend in the fact that the sun in Virgo is our light. It's our light force energy. It is where we have to pour our time, energy, attention in order to return to a state of health and wellness and wholeness that that Virgo energy is so desperately trying to push us into. But then we have this Neptune energy in uh, the retrograde direction in Pisces energy that is kind of like our higher selves, our spiritual selves. So it very much comes down to the same topics and themes that we explored under the full moon in Pisces, which is you know, the line, the balance that we have to strike between taking care of our physical bodies, our physical circumstances in the here and now, um, but also leaving room for the emotional and spiritual wellness to be nurtured and nourished just as much, if not um, a little bit more. Uh, In this Virgo energy, Virgo season, we have a lot of planets in Earth energy, which is really hard for many people and has us kind of consumed with the here and now. And the here and now is kind of stuck in this materialistic realm of our physical bodies, of our physical circumstances, which doesn't leave a whole lot of room for our higher selves, our intuition, our spiritual practice. And so this is definitely going to add to the discontentment, to the ebb and flow of where it is that our attention should be put into right now. This feels like we need to strike a balance between kind of moving inward and identifying, you know, am I putting too much time into my physical body? Do I spend more time into the gym as I do, you know, exploring in a meditation? Do I spend more time worried about what I'm putting into my body as far as food goes and not enough time worrying about the content that I'm absorbing? Because that again, adds to your mental, emotional and spiritual health and wellness. So this adds to the, I'm going to say, discontentment that we're currently feeling, the uncomfortability that we're currently feeling. But the sun, of course, wants us to pick a direction. And right now, we don't have a direction to pick. We are essentially directionless. We are figuring it out and we're not there yet. And there's a lot of pressure coming from within ourselves to have it all figured out. And, it, you know, it's just not happening as fast as we would like with all this earth energy. It is a very low and slow process. And so we do have to have a little bit more patience than we're normally used to having. So Venus goes ahead and trines the true note. True note is our soul's path, our destiny's point. Uh, Venus, of course, in an earth energy, the true node in an earth energy, in Taurus energy. Uh, Venus rules over Taurus energy. So this is likely going to be a little bit of a aha moment within us on where it is that we have to be a little bit more, I'm going to say, motivated and determined, if you will, to figure out how we're going to create stability in our lives, how we're going to create harmony, how we're going to find a middle ground. And that sounds very, you know, complicated with all the other aspects going on, especially with the earlier aspect between Venus and Mars, like we are having a a time right now where we're more focused on what isn't working, what doesn't feel good. And sometimes we have to use that as a framework to figure out what we can fix and what would feel better. And again, identifying new urges, new passions, new desires. And I think we should all be focused on because life is pretty crazy for all of us right now, where it is that we can take small actions in the run of our day to gain a little bit more stability in our mind, our body, our soul. When we kind of tackle the smaller pieces, they will connect and make the greater, grander whole. Sometimes to think about the big picture can be so overwhelming that we get in a state of paralysis. So instead of that, let's take a glimpse. Let's take a little bit of a snap snapshot of the dream of the vision that we have pieced together so far and break it down into small manageable pieces so that we're not so overwhelmed and that we have a better likelihood of actually being successful and bringing some of these elements to life. 
shortly after. We have the moon in Gemini conjunct sitting next to meeting up with Mars, who, as I mentioned, being the god of war ruling over our physical energy drive and our passion in Gemini energy is very torn, very, very frustrated, irritated, semi angered, if you will, uh, intellectually. Um, and because we don't have a plan, because we are lacking direction, uh, Mr. Physical Warrior himself is unable to actually exert that energy in our external realms in a way that would actually be blazing the path forward. Because of this, we do have to watch out for a couple of things. First of all, that we are using a filter. Keep in mind, Mercury is retrograde, miscommunications, misunderstandings are at an all time high, we have to expect that. But even more than that, we have the moon, our emotions in Gemini, which is a mentally stimulating intellectual energy that does rule over communication and expression, meeting up with the God of War who is frustrated as hell that he can't take action to move forward. And instead, he's got to kind of sit on the intellectual battlefield and cut through the challenges and obstacles that come up for us every single time we try to contemplate a path, a direction, an avenue to take, and all the shoulda, couldas, wouldas, and what ifs that come up. So why I say use a filter is because we could be in a situation right now where we, you know, verbal vomit all of our doubts, insecurities, frustrations onto other people. It could just come out in a very... Uh, aggressive kind of way because this is Mars energy so we kind of have to expect that um, but we could also find that we are leaning into one choice one decision one path one direction over the other just a tad and therefore we find inspiration and motivation to continue to run with that idea and that could be very inspiring we could see a new level of determination a new sense of spiritual renewal if you will uh, but the shadow element the downside the con if you will is that we verbal vomit everywhere and that we are a little bit angry and frustrated a little bit aggressive with our words mars being in gemini energy means that the weapon of choice is our tongue words are sharp words can hurt uh, so we have to be very careful with how it is that we are communicating ourselves in this very awkward time of adjustment this is when the moon bumps into the true node in such a way that would suggest that there is a situation that will be triggering and activating um, something going on in our exterior realms that we do not have control over that put us in a position to kind of recontemplate what it is that we want to do in moving forward. So emotionally speaking, this is probably going to be a disappointment. This is probably going to be a cluster F of our plans or what we thought we were going to kind of pursue from here that somehow some situation is going to illuminate for us that maybe we have to revise those plans. Again, we're in a retrograde. We have to revise, revisit, recalibrate, readjust, realign and redo a lot of the things that we thought that we were really set on. So then the moon goes ahead and squares, gets in the boxing ring with Venus, our goddess of love and beauty and worth and pleasure and money. Let me just say that emotionally speaking, we don't know what we want. We don't know what we need. We don't know what we desire. Here's the thing. The moon in Gemini Gemini energy ruled over by Mercury, Venus being in Virgo, Virgo's ruled over by Mercury, Mercury is currently retrograde in Libra, trying to strike a balance, trying to, to find peace and harmony, but usually needs to do so through the extremes. So at this particular point, we don't know what to think. What is lacking out of all of this is intuition. Is What is lacking is also uh, emotional intelligence. We're kind of all stuck up in our head space. We're trying to think our way through feelings, and that never works for anyone. So we are going to enter into the battle ring, if you will, and really fight it out, especially with some of the emotions, some of the thoughts that we're currently identifying in our personal relationships. Relationships. Again, Venus being in Virgo energy, highly focused on relationships, 
um, but also focused on what isn't working, what is broke in order for us to figure out how to fix it. And the moon being in Gemini energy is kind of trying to think its way through the feelings, which again, do not work. So we are kind of at odds with what it is that's going on right now, what it is we're not happy with, what it is that we want to change. And again, lacking a clear vision, a clear direction on what that would actually mean for us if we were able just to snap our fingers and have the situation fixed in the way that we would like to see it fixed. We don't even know what that would look like. We are going to wrap this day up with... With the moon sextiling Chiron, sextiles suggest that we're making some pretty good progress with our thoughts, with our feelings, with our strategy, with our plans. Now, granted, Chiron is the wounded healer, but because this is a positive aspect, this means that the funk that we've been sitting in, the extremes that we've been sitting in here today are illuminating for us where it is that we have healed some aspects. Why? Because we've brought some of the unconscious parts of us into our awareness. We've been able to identify some of the issues that we weren't able to even put our finger on up until today. And because we're able to identify some said issues and problems, now we can get to work on actually healing them, fixing them, solving them. This means that our heart and our head are actively trying to put together the pieces on what it is that we need to fix, need to heal. And of course, this Chiron energy gives us all the wisdom, all the resources, all the knowledge within us in order to do just that, which is to heal the deep seated wounds in our unconscious selves that keep us in the same patterns, in the same behaviors, in the same cycles, preventing us from actually moving forward, making the changes that we know that we have to make.